Hey there gang and welcome to your very first React Router 6 tutorial. So then, fairly recently, a new version of React Router was released, version 6, and it comes with a few improvements and breaking changes. The most notable change is the way that we declare routes in our applications using the route components. But also there's changes to how we make nested routes, use redirects, and we no longer have the switch component either. So in this series, I'm going to walk you through all of those changes and by the end of it, you should be pretty comfortable upgrading your existing React projects to use this new version of React Router. And by the way, you should already be familiar with React and older versions of React Router before you start this series. It's not aimed at complete beginners. So definitely check out my React courses. First of all, if you're completely new to it, the links to them are going to be down below the video. Now, to begin with, I've already created a small React starter project, which currently uses React Router version 5.1, and I've uploaded that project here on GitHub to this repo. So we'll be updating this project to use React Router version 6 throughout this series so that we can see clearly where it differs from the previous version. So the link to this repo is going to be attached to this video. And to download the starter project, you just need to hit the code button right here and then download a zip. I've already done that, so I'm not going to do it again. But also, I've uploaded the code for every other lesson in this series to this repo as well. So if you want to browse or download the code for a particular lesson, you can just select that lesson from the branch dropdown right here and then do the same thing. Hit the green code button and then select download zip. So then this is the zip folder I downloaded. So I'm just going to go into that and I'm going to extract all over here to extract it. Click next and then close these down. And this is the extracted folder right here. So if we go into that, we can see this is the project right here. So what I'm going to do is actually just rename this to something shorter, like React Router 6. And then I'm going to right click it and open it with VS Code. So now we have our project open in VS Code right here. And this is the starter project. Now to begin with, we have to install all of the dependencies of this project because when we download that zip folder from GitHub, it doesn't download all the dependencies in the node modules folder. We can see there's no node modules folder there. Now, if we take a look in package.json, we can see all of the different dependencies and notice we're using React Router DOM 5.1. So that's what I said. Currently, this project is made using React Router version 5.1. So the older way of doing things. And and then what we're going to do is gradually update all of that to match React Router version 6 and install that React Router version 6 package as well. So for now, let's open up a terminal, new terminal up here, and install all of these dependencies by saying npm install and hitting enter. So now that all of those dependencies are installed, let's quickly walk through this code. First of all, in the root app component, we declare all of our routes. So this should be pretty familiar to you already. So we import the browser router, first of all, which wraps our entire application pretty much. And inside that, we have some link components linking to different routes or pages. And then below that, we have our switch component wrapping all of our routes. Now, remember, a switch component wraps the routes to make sure that only one route can be active at any one time so that we don't see multiple different pages or page components on the screen at once. Now, inside the switch component, we register all of the routes using the route component. The way we do that is by using a path to specify the route path and then nest the component we want to render for that path. Or instead of nesting the component, we can also use the component prop on the route component itself to specify what component is rendered for that path. So two ways of doing it right here. So right here, we have a route for the root path of the website forward slash. And also on that, we have the component prop to say, show the home component for this path. Then we have a path for forward slash about and nested inside that route tag, we have the about component. So this means show the about component when we visit forward slash about. And again, we can specify which component to render for routes in both of these different ways here, either by nesting the component like this or specifying it in the component prop. Both approaches work pretty much the same way. 
Now below that we have the route for this path forward slash products forward slash ID where the ID is a changeable route parameter. So that's going to match any path like forward slash product forward slash two or forward slash product forward slash 10 where the ID is the number part that changes. And for those paths we show the product details component. And finally we have forward slash products which shows the products component. So that's how we're registering all of the routes. Now let's have a quick look at the different page components themselves. And by the way, all of those page components are being imported up here at the top. That's why we can use them down here. And as well, we're importing the browser router, the link, the route, and the switch components from React Router DOM, okay? So all of these pages, all of these components are inside the pages folder over here. So let's start with the home component, dead simple. So a component called home, we have a class name of the surrounding div, which is content. That's so we can style it inside this index.css file. I'll show you that later. Inside that we have an H1, a paragraph tag, an image, which is using this placeholder site right here, just to give us a blank placeholder image, then a paragraph underneath. So dead simple. So we show this component for just forward slash right here. Okay. The next one is the about component. So let's open that up. And in here we have a component called about again, a div with a class of content surrounds the entire thing. We have an H2, some paragraph tags, and then down here we have a nested route. So this is how we work with nested routes, right? If I want to have a nested route inside the about component, then I just register it right here using a route component, I specify the path, which includes forward slash about, which is the page we're on, and then whatever sub route we want to add after that. So if I go to forward slash about, I see this component and not this, but if I go to forward slash about forward slash offers, then it triggers this nested route and we see this offers component right here. Now we import the offers component up here at the top so we can use it and also the route component from React Router DOM. So that's how we're using nested routes in version 5.1. And this offers component right here is over here and it's dead simple. We have a simple template which says latest offers and then inside that we map through some items which is some state right here and I use use state to do that and these items is just an array of objects. Each object has a title property and a price property so they're like three products right? So we cycle through those using the map method and for each item we output a bit of templates um, for each one we have a div where the key is the item title because it is unique but ideally you'd probably use an ID or something and inside each div for each item we have an image which again uses that placeholder site and we have the item title in an h4 and the item price in a paragraph tag again all this should be familiar if it's not familiar then maybe you should start with my react courses and then come back to this all right so that's the office component the next page down here is the product details one and in fact we'll look at this one first of all the products one so inside here we have this products components and we have three lots of products we have three rows essentially products here products here and products here so sneakers tees and hoodies and for each one of these we're basically cycling through an array where this is kind of like the ID of the product I suppose 0 1 2 3 and then 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 so four in each one so we map through that array for each one and we output a bit of content for each item and for each item with the key is the item inside the array itself because it's unique and for each one we output a link to forward slash products and then forward slash whatever that is so zero one two three four etc and then each one of those surrounds a placeholder image as well so for example this div right here is going to have in four links and the route paths or the URLs to each one of those is going to be forward slash products then forward slash zero first of all because that's what this is then one then two then three etc okay same down here forward slash products then four then five then six then seven etc and the same for this one as well okay so this is kind of like a grid of products and we import the link tag by the way from react router dom at the top all right, so if we click on one of these, we're going to go to the product details page because then it matches this route right here. So inside product details, we can see we have the product details components 
and also we're grabbing the ID using this use params hook which we import at the top from react router DOM and by the way that doesn't change in version 6 we still use use params the same way to grab the right parameter okay so down here we have the content and inside that we have a div with a class of product then the image again using the placeholder site we have the product details so we grab the id and we output that in the template remember the id comes from this thing right here so that's going to be one two three four etc we have some paragraph tags and then down here another nested route this time the path is going to be to path where this is a variable and we get that from use route match and what that does is get us the current path to the current page that we're on so forward slash products in our case forward slash whatever the id is because that's the path right here so that gets us that current path okay and then we say forward slash offers on the end of that so if we go to forward slash products forward slash two for example then forward slash offers then it's going to match this route and it's going to show the offers component right here as well much like it did in the about component and that's this component right here so dead simple and again most of this should be kind of familiar kind of all right but don't worry too much about all of the different code for now we are going to go through it a little bit more as we go through this series but anyway that's all of the different page components and finally we have an index.css file where we import a Google font and just some basic styles to make the site look a little bit nicer. All right. So then, whew, let's try previewing this in the browser. I'm going to cross all of this off and then I'm going to open up a new terminal and then I'm going to say npm run start to spin up a dev server so we can preview this in a browser. All right then, so this is the project to begin with. So we can see we have the home component right here and the nav with the links at the top. And if I click on about, we see the about component. Now, if I go to forward slash about forward slash offers, we should see that nested route component down here as well. And oops, I need to spell this correctly, offers. And we do, we can see now the offers component at the bottom. So that's the nested route working. If we go to forward slash products, then we see all of those different products on the products components. And if we go to one of these, if we click on one of these, it should add an ID at the end and we go to the product details component. Now, if I go back and choose another one, the same component comes up, but we see the different ID here and up here as well. Now, remember, we also had the nested routes on this page. So if I put forward slash offers at the end of this one and press enter, then again, we're going to see that offers component at the bottom because it matches that nested route. So that's good. This is all working. All right then, so that's everything working well with React Router version 5.1, but we want to use React Router version 6 now. So first of all, I want to install React Router version 6 into this project. And to do that, we're first of all going to cancel out of the process, which is npm run start. So to do that, control C and then yes. And then let's clear this so we've got a bit more room. Then I want to install the latest version of React Router and I want it to override the current one we have installed at the minute, which is 5.1, okay? So to do that, we cross this off, we say npm install, and then react hyphen router hyphen DOM, and then at six at the end to install version six and press enter. And then when that's done, if we open up package.json again, we can now see we're running this version, 6.2.1, okay? Now then, if we try to run this project again by saying npm run start, then we're going to run into problems because now we're using React Router version 6 and all of our code is geared up for version 5. So in a second, we're going to see a load of errors in the terminal down here and we can see those. And if we open the browser, we can see a load of errors over here as well. So this is because, like I said, we're using outdated code now for a newer version of React Router DOM. So we're going to address all of these different issues over the next few videos and update all of our code to work with React Router version 6.